with 250 West starting this weekend and the entry list finally coming out, I figured I should make this video. For some reason, I didn't make it before the beginning of the season for 250 East and the 450 class, but I'm making this one. And that's who I think are going to be the heavy hitters this season. Uh, who's who's going to be top five pretty much. So I have I have my top five. And then I also have four honorable mentions that I'm just going to talk about real quick also because these guys I feel are capable of getting top five at the end of the year. They're just not in my top five. They're capable of getting top fives at races, top threes, even winning. Uh, but just at the end of the season, they're not in my top five unless some crazy things happen. So first off, I have Pierce Brown. He is Troy Lee, Red Bull Gas Gas. He's coming off of an injury. That's pretty much why he's in honorable mentions. He hasn't been on the bike very long. He won't be on the on the gate this weekend at Orlando too. And if you even miss one race in the 250 class, you're, you're out. Even top five, it's going to be hard to get. So he had knee surgery uh, end of September last year, 2020. He got back on the bike end of January, so it's only been a couple weeks. That's not enough time to, to get on the gate for Orlando too, but he has insane speed. He was last year a rookie, and I thought he was the fastest rookie coming in, but uh, more injuries and stuff happened, and he didn't get to show, I think, his, his full potential. So maybe once he gets back on the gate, if he can stay healthy, he can show it. Yeah, he won't be on the gate this weekend. Don't know when he's going to be on the gate, so he's in an honorable mention. The next two guys are kind of the same. They both had factory rides last year, and they don't have that this year. That's the reason they're not in top five, because they're more than capable of getting top fives. But I just, they say that their bikes are, are capable of competing with factory bikes, but that's just hard. Martin will be on, uh, it's like three teams molded into one. It's called Man Luck Rock River Merge Racing Yamaha. So Alex was, he was on JGR. JGR is no longer a team. He's had some really good finishes in Supercross, both on factory and on pretty much the team that he's on now, Rock River Yamaha. In 2019, 250 East, he got a fifth place overall at the end of the year. And in 2015, when he was on Rock River, he got sixth. So he's capable of, of getting really good results on a non-factory bike, but it's going to be hard to compete with all those guys because there's quite a few factory guys in this coast. And then March Banks is on Club MX. He is coming off of an injury also. Last year, he got fourth place in the championship, and he didn't even race the last two races. He was on pro circuit. He also won his first race last year at Daytona before the big break because of Chris, I probably shouldn't say that or else this is going to get demonetized. And then he, he destroyed his knee and had some pretty bad internal stuff at Salt Lake that put him out for a while. But he's been back on the bike for, for quite a bit. Uh, and he says that the Club MX bike is, is capable of competing with the factory dudes. But I don't know. I guess we'll see. And then finally, Jaleek Swole. I just don't know enough about the kid. It's only his second year in Supercross. Last year, he was a rookie, and he actually ended up doing really well. He got seventh place overall. But then he got injured during outdoors and had shoulder surgery at the end of September. So that put him out for a bit. But the, the one wild card with him, either good or bad, we've seen both, is that he's started training with Alden Baker this offseason. So he could be a completely different rider than last year. I just don't know. He doesn't post enough on Instagram for me to see. Those four are my honorable mentions. Like I said, they are more than capable of getting top fives, but I just don't see them getting top five overall in the championship. So what are my top five? In fifth place, I have Cameron McAdoo. So he is a pro circuit Kawasaki rider. His best ever finish in Supercross was in 19. He got a fifth overall at the end of the year. He's a bit of a wild card also. He's got pretty crazy riding style. He can probably throw a whip bigger than anybody out there. That comes with some positives and negatives. He can crash hard a lot, and he's had some, some injuries because of it. He's also been kind of a, a backup rider until fairly recently. I think even last year when he got the pro circuit ride, it was kind of maybe a backup deal. He's been backup rider for uh, Geico Honda. So he's been a really good, I guess you could say, support rider in the previous years. And, and maybe this year 
is his time to to step it up and show that he's the fastest guy on pro circuit. He's got a, a difficult teammate to try to become the top guy with. So we'll we'll see what happens there. But I have McAdoo in fifth. I think he could get some race wins, but he's just a bit too all over the place for me to to think that he would get better than fifth. I guess we'll find out. I could definitely be wrong, but there's just a there's there seems like there's some heavy hitters in this coast. So now in fourth place, I have a bit of another wild card. I have Hunter Lawrence in fourth. If you don't know who he is, he's the older brother of Jet Lawrence, who on the other coast, East Coast, West Coast, East Coast, East started first. Jet is is kind of killing it right now. He's he's had some problems with crashes and stuff, but he's showing that he quite possibly is the fastest 250 rider right now. Just is not there consistency wise. You know what I mean? But Hunter, he's kind of had a a shaky U.S. debut. I think that he is capable of matching his younger brother. They both have ridiculous technique on a dirt bike that will serve him well in Supercross, just like it is for Jet. But he's only had two Supercross races in his career so far, and it was the last two rounds of Salt Lake last year. They weren't the best. He got a 13th in the first one and a 7th in the second one. But I feel like if he can get it together, he can end up being really good and a race winner, and I have him in my top five because of that. I think he's capable of being even faster than Jet, but uh, I guess time will tell. I have him in fourth. So now the top three. This one, this is pretty hard. Uh, I think that all three of these guys are are capable of, of getting any of the spots in the top three. They could win, they could get second, they can get third. But in third place, I personally have Jordan Smith. So he is racing for Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki also. He's the teammate of Cameron McAdoo. He's a he's definitely a veteran in this class. He's been he's been here for a while. He's had good supercross finishes in years past. But when I was going through his results, what was crazy is that he hasn't done very well in outdoors. So these teams obviously they want a guy good in both. But since he's so good in Supercross, I guess Pro Circuit has some faith in him because I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but the best overall finish he's had in outdoors at the end of the year is 24th place. But in Supercross, he's gotten a second, and that's in 2018. And in 2017, he was he was real close to winning until he wadded himself in Vegas. So he has three total Supercross wins. And I think that the biggest thing for him is that he gets injured quite a bit, and he's coming off of another injury. So last year, he missed all of outdoors. He only did four Supercross races. So he had knee surgery last year in March, and he was back on the bike in August. He also almost missed all of 2019 because of injuries, because of a wrist injury. He only did four Supercross and three outdoors that year also. In the past two years, he's only had eight Supercross races total and three outdoors. In this sport, you you need to be active and that might cost him quite a bit, not racing very much in the past two years. Definitely, it's all about inconsistency in injuries with him, and I feel like it might be a mental thing more than anything. So if he can figure that out, he could easily win this championship. But for that reason, the inconsistency and in not being as active as a lot of these other dudes, it's going to be hard for him, I, I think. So that's why I have him in third place. And then in second place, I have Justin Cooper. Justin Cooper is on uh, Monster Energy Star Racing Yamaha, if that's what it's called. I think that's what it's called. His best Supercross finish overall is second. That was in both 19 and 20. He only has one Supercross win, which I thought was surprising. But 2020, Anaheim 1 was his his only win. That's I I almost now am, am questioning myself, <laughs> and I want to go back and look because that doesn't seem right. So Anaheim 1. 2020 and he didn't win for the rest of the year didn't win in 2019 and only raced once 2018 so yeah justin cooper only has one win in supercross which kind of blew my mind in my opinion he has the talent to be the best out there but it seems like mentally maybe he's not 
quite the strongest guy. In amateurs, he was actually faster on a 450 than he was a 250, so I'm really interested to see where he goes in the future. Once he gets on a 450, he could be deadly. He could be insane. But he is also coming off injury. There's a lot of guys on this coast that are coming off injury because it's the it's the second of the two. Normally, West Coast is first. East Coast was first this time. So all these guys that were injured, they needed just a little bit more time before they before they started racing. So there's a lot of guys on this coast that are coming off of injury. In mid-October, he had shoulder surgery. Then he was back on the bike mid-December. And then he broke his foot mid-January and was back on the bike early February. So he really, he doesn't have that much time on the bike compared to some of these other riders. And that, that could be a huge, huge detriment to him. But I still think he has the talent to to fight for this championship, even with not being on the bike as long as the other guys. He's got a great trainer in Gareth Swanepoel that he's going to be in shape no matter what. When Even when he was off the bike with a broken foot, he was still training like crazy. So fitness shouldn't be a, a big deal. He has the speed no matter how much time he has on the bike. He's He's used to these longer layoffs too. He's a kid from New York that growing up, kind of like here in Colorado, during the winter, you don't ride much. So he's he's kind of used to maybe not having as much time on the bike as all these other guys. So I have him in second. Again, yeah. <laughs> maybe this is his year because in 19 and 20, he's been second, but I just, I have him in second again. And then finally in first, I have Jeremy Martin, another another veteran of this 250 class. He's been in it for a while, but he's had, he's had some big ups and some big downs. Uh, he races for Monster Energy Star Racing Yamaha. Also, he is the teammate of Justin Cooper. He is a two-time outdoor champion, but has never won a Supercross championship. His best result in Supercross has been uh, third place. He did it in 15, 16, and 18. He has six Supercross wins, which is the most out of all of them. He's gotten a second place in Daytona on a 450, something that nobody else in the class has, and that was in 2017. And up until this year, he's been on Geico Honda for a few years. And before that, he was on Star Racing Yamaha. That's the team he's on again. That's the bike that he's had the most success on in his whole career. So he's back on that bike, the bike that the bike that I consider the best out of all of them. He is also, I guess you could say, an outdoor specialist. And we quite possibly have four outdoor type supercross tracks this year we obviously have daytona that one always favors guys that are 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 good at outdoors if they're not as good at supercross but this year we also have atlanta one two and three that are at a nascar track also like daytona the thing is though is that we don't know what the dirt's going to be like so it could end up being like a normal supercross track if it's if it's hard clay type dirt and not the the more, I guess you could say, sandy type dirt that Daytona has. If all three Atlantas end up being like Daytona, that's going to that's gonna bigly favor Jeremy Martin because he is so good at outdoors. And when you have four out of, I think, West Coast is 10 rounds. East Coast is normally nine, West Coast is normally 10. But when you have four of those be more outdoor type tracks and you're an outdoor specialist, that's going to favor you a lot. But if they are more Supercross style than Daytona is, I I think that'll be fine for him because kind of the same thing is Christian Craig on Instagram, Jeremy Martin just looks really, really good. He looks better than he ever has at Supercross. And just being back on a Yamaha on Star Racing on that bike, he, he looks comfortable again and he looks super fast again. So I have him winning the championship. This 250 West Coast was was very hard to pick a top five for, but I'm pretty confident in my picks, but I guess we'll find out as the season goes on. So to go over it again, I have Jeremy Martin in first, Justin Cooper in second, Jordan Smith in third, Hunter Lawrence in fourth, and Cameron McAdoo in fifth. I am confident in my picks, but I can almost guarantee that they're not going to be correct. <laughs> you, you, can't, you can't predict anything in this sport you can't predict race winners you can't predict championship winners but it's fun to try so let me know who you guys think will be the top five there's obviously a a lot of riders that 
not only deserve to be mentioned in this top five, but they deserved to be mentioned in the honorable mentions. But if I would have went through all riders that I've thought could possibly get a top five in races, this video would be two hours long. So I'm not going to do that. So I just went with who I think are going to be fighting for the top five in the championship. That's who the honorable mentions are on top of my top five picks. So yeah, let me know who you have in the top five. Maybe it's the same as mine. Maybe it's way different, but I'd like to see. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm stoked for this season to start, and I hope you guys are too.